to speak, mother that I knew so well and uh, grown up with that uh, I had the best record in the company. So uh, after so many years, Mr. Schlichter, my boss, General Ma Vice President General Manager Chester Nass, asked me one day, he says, I'd like to take you off to make you the new uh, sales manager of Pierce and Piper. So I in turn said, fine, uh, I appreciate that very much, I'll be glad to do that. So I stepped in as sales manager and I was in charge of all the salesmen and uh, I went from there to being vice president of sales and then later on Mr. Nass, who was my boss, uh, died and I in turn then was made uh, vice president and general manager of Beers and Fire. What am I talking about? Uh, about the 60s? Mm -hmm. Mr. Ness died the year that Dave was born, was it 1967? 1967. 1967. Yeah. 1967. And uh, when I went up, I went to, I took over then, and then I finally was there until uh, 1982 when I retired. So the era that I had was a very, very satisfying one with a lot of the new developments and so forth. And the company grew. Pierce and Piper didn't own it anymore. They were, it was sold uh, right after the war by Pierce and Piper. And uh, it was taken over by Pettibone Corporation. And Pettibone was, uh, was the best company Pettibone had. We produced more profit for Corporation, the Beardsley and Piper, than uh, any other one of the many companies they had. Now, I know that you were active, of course, in the American Founders. Well, you know, I had the, the privilege and the honor of being appointed uh, president of the American Founding Society, and also I was and that appointed. That was uh, about what year? In the 70s, sometime? You know, that was definitely, my win was 76, 76, 76, okay. 76. and 72, I guess it was. Okay. And I ended up uh, being president of the FEF, which is the Foundry Educational Foundation. And that distinction and honor uh, was something that uh, I was very pleased to receive. And now, was uh, that a, a real demanding uh, position to be well, in? Well, it was when you're in, it's, it's an honor to become a president of a of national course. association. You bet. You bet and is. the situation that prevailed there was, uh, I was pleased, I was appointed the board of directors of the American Founding Society, and uh, I've been a, on that for about three years, and then I was made president of the American Founding Society, and subsequently the Foundry Educational Foundation, which is another association that provides scholarships for uh, students that have an interest in the Foundry. And the situation that prevailed there was that uh, I was also chosen then after being on the board of directors uh, of the FEF for one year, I guess it was, uh, two years, I think it was one. And then I and I was uh, in president of the that National Association. Now you say you were so a, that's a, appointed uh, to this position. Was it uh, an appointment by the board? The well, board the appointment of with the, uh, the board of directors of the a nomination comes up. As given, I had nothing to do with nominating myself or anything. It's just the fact some people, on, everybody on the board of directors can't be a president. Right. And you, you're a, I was on the board for three years, and that's the normal term. And after being on the board for three years, then I was uh, appointed to, and selected to be the president of the 
both of those associations. So that basically is the history of what I am. And I went with the Daytona Career Teams in 1982 when they retired. Okay. So you're enjoying your retirement, right? I'm enjoying my retirement. <laughs> I'm enjoying my uh, life, my children, and my grandchildren, and my daughter-in-laws, and... Well, now tell us, I, I know, you talked about your wife. What's your favorite nickname for your wife? My favorite name for my uh, nickname for my wife is Sugar Puss. Sugar Puss. Really? I, I call her Sugar Puss because she's so sweet. <laughs> oh, you like that? Yeah. That's pretty good, Mom. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. Really? I'll drink to that. We want to go back uh, a little bit on, on your childhood. Now, you, you told us you were a little bit of a Dickens there. <laughs> kind of a kind of a rascal. A rascal, a little bit of start now. Um, when, how would your mother and father handle discipline in your family if, if they caught you uh, doing uh, being less than the perfect child? What was it? You know, a, a swat with a hairbrush or sent to your bedroom? Or <laughs> what type of thing would you get for discipline? Well, I would be primarily disciplined by my father, and he had a good habit of uh, taking his hand and really whacking you across the, the face, uh -huh. and uh, we didn't bother with, uh, with the, the cat and nine tails or anything to scare you. I guess we had that later on, but we did not for me. But we were disciplined. I was disciplined, more so than Dolores, my sister, and my brother. Because <coughs> so, you had a more creative uh, way Well, I was more devilish, trouble. I think. <laughs> I was more devilish than certainly my sister and then my brother. My brother always tried to emulate and do the, everything that I would do what he would like to do. Mm -hmm. And he more or less lived in my shadow, I guess. That's one of those things. He never got, his name was Frank. He was named after my father, and my father never walloped him like he walloped me. <laughs> and I mean, he walloped me, too. Is that because he didn't deserve it as much? <laughs> um, no, I don't think it's a question of that. Uh, he was um, his namesake, you know. And he, and I was the oldest. Yeah. I could catch all of it. And I did, too. Yeah. In, in the house that you grew up in, um, you know, that's the house then that eventually... And Dodie and Uncle Ed. Right. Yeah, right. That's now, right. right. That's that's the house. That's the house that, that's as I told you, we were born East in Avenue? Cicero and then we moved to Burnham. And I was just, I guess I must have been five years old. Uh, well, did you have your own bedroom or did you and Frank share? No, we had, uh, no, we didn't have our own bedroom. We, the house was remodeled and later on we, uh, had more room, made it upstairs in it, and so forth and so on. But uh, we, uh, we were my sister, there were three of us, of course, and as far as our own bedroom. Mm -hmm. I can't remember the uh, the detail of the house for some reason, but I do know we had the bedroom, two bedrooms downstairs. And then that was, we did the remodeling, some remodeling and change, and we made the upstairs, and we had. Uh, more bedrooms. We had three bedrooms. So we could correlate the time element as to when that was. I, I can't remember. Okay, and, and you were your, your mother or your father had more influence on you as far as? My mother was more influential on that part. Of it. She was, uh, my father was raised a Catholic. Uh, my mother was too. But the uh, situation that prevailed there was that. My mother was more religious, religious than my dad. Mm -hmm. My dad would, he would go to church, but he wouldn't go to church. Or uh, outwardly. Yeah, regularly. Yeah. Um, do you have any other real happy childhood memories that, you, that you'd like to tell us about? I think that the, well, all of my memories were, <laughs> of my childhood, I think, were very, very good. Okay. And growing up in Berwyn, going to school there and the things that were done and where we went and went to Fox Lake. And in the summertime, that's where I got the idea that if I was successful that my kids were going to go to have a place to go to. And 
Fox Lake is not too far away from Twin Lakes. And while I did know about Twin Lakes, because my father had a friend that was the president of the Iceman's Union, and they used to go to the same tavern he did. We, Dave Topping and I, and George Publishock, who went to school with me, went to uh, Twin Lakes many years ago after we were we finished painting our house in Berlin. Dave and George Publishock and myself painted the house. So my father then says, "You guys got two weeks at Twin Lakes." And we stayed in Twin Lakes, and we were teenagers, and I must have been about 17 or 16, and he was uh, 18. And we had a good time at Twin Lakes that time. A real good time. Quite an adventure for a couple of young guys, huh? And we went to, uh, they got five bucks, I guess. That was quite a bit of money. Mm -hmm. And we went to the Lake Geneva. Can you tell me, do you remember what color you painted the house? <laughs> that wasn't even important, was no. it? <laughs> Brown, I guess. Was. That, uh, we had a good time. That's where my, my indoctrination at Twin Lakes was. Uh -huh. My father used to work there. What he did? Uh, Wall Manis and Fox Lake. And he would go up there on occasions and I'd go with him. Now we but know Twin now Lakes it takes about an hour and a half now to get from uh, Berlin up there. But I did. back in those days, it took a little bit longer to drive up to Twin Lakes. Do you remember any no. of your, your trips up there? Well, not really to Twin Lakes because it was we'd always well, drive from Fox Lake, Fox Lake yeah. which is only about uh, ten miles, eight miles from uh, Twin Lakes. Yeah. And Powers Lake, of course, is just a couple of miles from right. where we are she now. You didn't have the good roads and the fast cars. Paved roads, so mm -hmm. didn't. Uh, I can remember way back earlier then, with the, the time of uh, when I was a little guy at Fox Lake. We didn't have the uh, cars. Can you remember getting your first car? I can remember the first car I had was a uh, Ford Model T touring car. And this is one that, that your mom and dad bought now? Yeah, they bought. And it was a, uh, well, not had the icing glass, the celluloid type of uh, curtains uh -huh. in case it rained. Uh -huh. It's the old Model T. Uh -huh. That was our first car. Yeah, yeah. No, you had to, oh, you mean the, oh, you had to crank the, the car? You had to crank the car to start it. Yeah. Yeah. Hard, hard rubber tires? They weren't inflated No, tires. they were inflated tires. But they were, that's the first of the inflated yeah. tires. Yeah, well, what do you think what, about what year are you talking that you got your first mm. car? Somewhere in the 30s? Or no, I'd say it was 20s, 28. I can't remember. 20. I'd say uh, 16 to, to 24 is 8 years, right? 24 to 32 is six, another eight is 16 years. So it was, uh, it was about 1928, I'd say. Okay. And, and were you able to drive that right away as soon as No, you no, had? I couldn't drive it. I was too young to drive. Okay. Wasn't even 20, maybe it was 428. Did you ever have a car with a rumble seat? No. No. <laughs> no. Those always looked like so much fun. Yeah, it did. <laughs> I did have a car, I had an old Oldsmobile, mm -hmm. not an Oldsmobile, I had a uh, Studebaker it was, a Studebaker, that was, uh, What about the, the first car that you yourself went and bought, and you talked about it with No, with that's the one I bought. Uh, that was a Studebaker? Was yeah, the, it was a Studebaker, second hand. Yeah. And what color was that? That was, uh, I don't remember the color. Yeah, it was second hand? Black. Second hand, oh, second? yeah, that was second hand. It was yeah. never new. Yeah. It wouldn't get. The only new car we ever had was the Ford that my dad bought, and then we had new cars subsequently after that. Uh -huh. He used to be a salesman for liquid carbonic. And then he had to have a car as a salesman. He got cars every two or three years. We haven't talked much about your mother and dad, and, and that's one thing that we want to do is go back.
back a little bit into the to the memories of who they were and, and what kind of people they were. So, so your mother's maiden name was Dvorak, right? Her name was Dvorak. And uh, my knowledge and recollection of where she was born in Chicago, and my father was born in Chicago. Uh, but yeah, this what, was the area first, what was her first name? My mother's first name. Okay. Only Dvorak, and, and your father's first name was, was Frank. 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 Frank Nosek. Right. And that, uh, he lived and was brought up on Alport Street in uh, Chicago, and his father was a tailor. Uh, by a tailor, I mean he was uh, he was in the tailoring business, and the home that they had on Elport Street in Chicago, the old neighborhood, very old, which still exists, uh, they had a tailor shop behind the house, and this was a two-flat building. And behind that, those kids were was their front was the house, and behind it was the tailor's room. And they used to cut the clothes, the cloth, for Alfred Decker and Cohn, which was a, a tailoring concern. And I think what was Harshaffer and what. They take the patterns for the suits and they do the cutting, uh -huh. and then they would take them by horse and wagon from when they were 18th and Alport downtown. Alpha Decker and Cone and our chapter, I guess, they would sew these uh, coats. I mean, these uh, cuttings to, into suits. In other words, if you they have a pattern, the, the pattern that you make a dress from. Went for different size suits, they would cut for different sizes, but they would never sew anything. In other words, then they'd make the sleeves you know, and the collars. You know. All that stuff would be made, and then they would ship it by their own wagon and a horse. And they had a, a horse barn right behind the, the tailor plant where they used to cut the clothes. That's where my father got to, knew how to cut. You know. He started as a, he got a job as a cutter. So that basically is uh, the history of. Do you have any happened. idea where your mother and father, how they met? And no, I have no were? idea. I have, I know they met somewhere in the Pilsen area, and uh, that's part of Chicago now that used to be the west side of Chicago, and still is the west side, but it, is, it was a nice neighborhood in those days. Mm -hmm. um, how old were you when your father passed away? My father, father passed away uh, when he was 48 years old. Mm -hmm. Very young. What did, he, uh, what did he die of? He died of a heart attack, heart mm -hmm. seizure, and he died uh, in the same building that he was born in. Is that right? Well, in the hospital. Yeah. He had, after, he was with, uh, in the tailoring business, as I told you, not in business, but working, and then went from one, that to, to others. The salesman for liquid carbonic, and uh, was a good salesman, too. He had various and sundry jobs, and then he was in, uh, Politics prior to that, I guess, for a while. Then he went to uh, Liquid, and from Liquid he went to uh, started a tavern in the same building he was born in. Hmm. Now, what type of politics? And was he, he died in politics and down. Was he like a, an alderman? No, he was board? commissioner of public works, but mm -hmm. he was a, a promoter for promoting political end of it. But he was responsible for electing the mayor and mm -hmm. things like that. Basically, was. Uh, he was a, had a good gift to gab, mm -hmm. good personality. So then he, he got into, you said he had a tavern? Or? Yeah, 
before he died. That's where he died. He died in the tavern. Well, he was yeah. only 48. That had to be quite a shock to yeah. the family. Yeah. I started the tavern business, and then I, he was in. I was on the road at that time. I remember it was in Columbus, Ohio, and I was not a salesman. And that was uh, a. Uh, uh -huh. See, the war ended in '45, uh -huh. and I was still in the service industry. Uh -huh. Well, a lot of times back then. Well, that's wrong. Yeah. I think I'm wrong. Maybe it. Mm -hmm. I'd have to. I knew I was. I know it was in. Uh, I, I was. I was a salesman. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot of times back then, uh, people had a lot of home remedies and things that they could use. Usual things, nothing serious. Nothing serious. No, we had uh, any special home remedies. Yeah, you know, you know, we had home remedies where they <laughs> rub your throat and put a velvet or a cloth or wool cloth around your neck mm -hmm. and the usual stuff. Fix paper rub and all that sort of stuff. All that stuff, yeah. right? But, uh, what else? Uh, well, I can like tell you a lot of yeah. stories. Do you have any there. broken bones? Broke my thumb. I was fighting. And uh, when I went to Morton High School, I was uh, on the boxing team. Oh, this was a, a team boxing. This wasn't one of those kids that tried to beat you up and you whipped them. <laughs> no, no. It wasn't that one, huh? Well, was, I've had that, though. That, that was a pretty condition. Uh, I went in, well, like to mention, I guess, went to see my own. To go to college in the uh, semifinals. I, uh, no, I did not the semifinals, but the quarterfinals. I worked my way up the, quarter, the quarterfinals and I broke my thumb in the first round, and the guy I lost to won the championship. The championship. Now, what, what weight and, uh, class were you boxing in? I was 135 pounds of the lightweight. Uh -huh. And uh, the first pond I hit this pole on behind the head, he was walking his hand opened up and I'm coming with a hook to hit him right in the jaw and his head I was a little late and I hit him right behind the head and I popped the thing right oh. so you can see that thumb yeah, was just I think, yeah. completely I never noticed that before. Huh? Never noticed it before. And that cost me a college education. So I never got to Notre Dame. <laughs> so that's so you did pretty good without Notre Dame. <laughs> well, all right. Now, what else do you want to know? You can enjoy it as a, as a you know grandparent the, going there to watch the football game. You know, you know all about what's happened at Powers Lake, right? Right. Well, so you're in part got all of it you want to know on that. Okay. You don't hear anything from me. Well. What about, um, we haven't heard from you now, how you met uh, Evelyn? Your, uh, Evelyn and, uh, oh, that's when, very, when, very, when you got, uh, very When you finally stuff. broke up with Vivian, and, and we haven't heard about all these things. Why don't you uh, have them together when they talk about that? Yep. I'll ask them separate first, and then I'll get them together. Okay. She'll be able to make her own comparisons. The situation that prevailed there, now we're talking about, uh, how I met Evelyn. Mm -hmm. Well, that was very simple. Uh, I had a, my mother's cousin was Father Resek. And Father Resek ended up getting a position as a assistant parish priest at St. Leonard's in Berlin, mm -hmm. and he was the assistant there, and at that time I was, we've been there for some time, but I was on the road, and uh, as a service <coughs> man, this is my memory bearing in mind, I got married in 1941, and uh, told and 
he and my mother, you know, my father died, I, I'm just mixed up here a little bit. Well, going back to his being a priest, he was a, a, our priest, but not the parish head of the... He was like an associate? He was an associate, or, and I was on the, the road, and it ended up my mother and father were having a, a 25th anniversary, and Father Rezek was having the Mass for that anniversary, and he made a surprise party for my mother and my father, and it so happened that he saw me, and I didn't know that Evelyn was going to be at this affair, but Evelyn used to dance at the parish in polka dancing mm -hmm. for certain affairs with the polka uni uh, uniforms and so forth and so on. And it so happened that I was at one of these affairs and with him, and now he was there, and he in turn knew of my mother and father's anniversary and was going to be have the mass and be an attendant at the function in the evening. And Evelyn's standing there and I'm standing right next to her when we're we're talking and he brings this up and he says, I want to uh, I'm, I'm watching you too. I know. I'm getting so on track hear you here too. with your gestures. The situation is that uh, Evelyn and then was at this <coughs> celebration of the 25th anniversary of my mother and my father. And uh, I had not known that she was going to be there. I hadn't seen her before.